Have you ever had a client that either called you or you went to a meeting just to find out they're actually not in the same ballpark as you are, they're about to lowball you? Well, stick around to the rest of the video and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to make sure it doesn't happen. Welcome back legends, welcome to another vlog. My name is Dan Brack, for those of you that don't already know. First of all, I wanna say that our Facebook group is blowing up. We have over 200 members already within the first couple months and this is making me really happy. I'm helping you where I can, I see you guys helping each other where you can, so this is great. We're a big community helping each other grow our own agencies, which is awesome. If you haven't yet joined the group, I'll post the link in the description, so make sure you do. There's a lot of valuable information that you can learn from and obviously help share your knowledge as well. So I'm sure you've had a situation when you went to a meeting or you got a call from a client, you told them the numbers, they're shopping around, obviously, and they're even letting you know they're shopping around. You give them the number and they're hitting you with, hey, like, I know whatever you're offering, but I'll offer you this much less. What do you do? I wanna hear in the comments below, has that happened to you or what situations you've been in? I wanna kinda address the situation because I've seen a lot of questions on our Facebook group and overall on other Facebook groups as well. I've had a few people reach out to me specifically asking how to price the services correctly and how to make sure that the clients that you meet and call, they don't actually just lowball every single time. One thing you need to understand is everyone is out there to get the best deal. Even when we are going to shop for a product or a service, we do tend to look for the best deal. Now the rare few of us don't care and they close their eyes. I would say 90% of the people who are watching, we know that there is a better price, there's a better service and so on. The one thing that always confused me though is when somebody is negotiating a service. Now most of us when we shop around, we're shopping around for things that are not necessarily a big difference between one service or the other. For example, if we go to a car shop, we know one reputable car shop, maybe two, so we kind of shop around which one has cheaper prices to it and then we kind of go there. When it comes to actually web design or SEO or paid ads, at the end of the day, the difference between service providers is who can get the best result, but not necessarily for the cheapest price. The number one thing I want you to remember is be confident with your craft. If you're confident with what you're doing and you know that you can provide results for the business, it comes across that way. When you're sitting down with a client, they can feel the vibe from you, the way you talk, the way you present yourself, the way you have everything prepared. They know that you know what you're talking about and because of that alone, they're feeling more comfortable doing business with you. Now confidence can be a good thing, but obviously you don't want to overdo it. You want to find a fine line to it. But everything starts from the very beginning when they first call you or email you. The way you handle that call or that email is going to translate into your meeting. So what I like to call this is number two is pre-framing your meeting. Now what do I mean by pre-framing? I'll give you an example. If you go to a movie with a friend and you keep telling them, hey, this movie was a horrible movie. Like I didn't like the action in it. It was kind of boring not my type of movie at all. Now they're going to the movie with the expectation this is a bad movie and even if it's a good movie for them, they'll still feel negative about it because you pre-framed it in a negative way. Now take the same movie and talk good about it, say how much you loved it, you loved the certain parts, it might have not been the greatest movie but you really liked it. Now that person is gonna go into the movie and be like, oh this is actually a decent movie. No matter how bad it was, they'll still think it was a good movie because you pre-framed it in the right way. Now, of course, it doesn't apply for every single occasion, but you see where I'm going with this. So how does pre-framing apply to setting up a meeting on the phone? Well, when a client calls you, if you talk about what you do and how you do it, rather than listening to them, you're pre-framing the conversation into selling your service. You don't want to keep selling yourself because they called you. They need you for something. They don't need to be sold. They already called you because they're looking for a service and they know that you're a provider. All they want to know is how you do things, how much it costs and so on. They're shopping around trying to find the best deal. But the way you want to handle this conversation on the phone with the client is pre-frame it in a way that you're not selling yourself, but rather giving them information, providing lots of value and helping them understand why and how they want their website done. Then you explain to them that it's probably a good idea to have a strategy session set up so that you can go over everything with them through beginning to the end as to what they want and how they want it. But you mapping out the entire process with them from beginning to end of how you do things and by you uncovering things that they didn't even think of, all of a sudden they start seeing you as an expert, they understand the value of your services, they actually see how much bigger the project is than what they thought it would be, and now they understand where the numbers come from when you come to the point of telling them how much it costs. 
Number three of one of my favorite things to do in sales when it comes to talking to a client or in a meeting is use the method of anchoring. Now, what is anchoring? So for example, let's say a client gives you a call and they are shopping around or asking for more information about your service and find out how much it costs. What I like to do when it comes down to giving them a number, I like to start with a high number first and then give them a lower number after as a range. Like for example, if some of you say 5,000 to 20,000, I like to flip it around 20,000 and sometimes up to 5,000 depending on what you need. Now, why do we want to do it this way? Why are we using this anchoring method? Well, that's because when somebody hears the number 20 first versus a five, all of a sudden 20 is the first number that sticks in the head. They've already anchored themselves at a higher level, but they do know that there's an option to go lower. But what's beautiful about this now is you've pre-framed the meeting, you've anchored the numbers, and now when you're in the meeting, whether it's still on a phone call or you're sitting in the meeting already, they know what to expect. If you did a good enough job on the phone, they won't even have a meeting with you if they try to lowball you. If you're in a meeting first, because like, that's the first thing they want to do is find out who you are and what you're about, and now you did all the presentation and you give the anchoring and you did everything correctly, there's very limited reason for them to lowball you a lot. Now let's say you've done everything 100% correct on the phone. You've pre-framed the conversation so they know what to expect. You've anchored the numbers on the phone so they know what numbers to expect. And now you're in the meeting. You go through the entire value, you show them the strategy and the process that you're taking. You uncover a bunch of things that they have never even thought of. And all of a sudden you have this whole map out of everything you're gonna do for them. Comes down to the final number. You give them the number and they're like, look, everything sounds great. Like we wanna do this, but Look, you're too expensive. Now pause right there. In this case, this client is not saying, hey, look, I want to reduce your cost. I can find it somewhere cheaper. What they're saying is, look, I want to work with you, but I just can't afford it. So you got to make sure you understand the difference between a low baller and somebody that just can't financially afford working with you. So if we go with a person that says that they can't afford it, realistically, from the phone conversation you had before you get to the meeting, they should already know what to expect. So there's no surprises when you're sitting down with them. Your portfolio and your confidence and everything else tied into up to the final number should already give them a good indication what the cost. If they still say you're too expensive for them after everything you've shown them, the chances are something else went wrong in a meeting. But the way to handle that objection is to first of all agree. You never say, oh my God, or explain yourself. You don't want to panic. This is the basic rules of sales. You want to go back and explain and understand what's going on. So what I like to say when someone says, hey, you're too expensive is, that's actually really good you told me. I would never want to start a project that you can't afford. One thing I want to ask you is, why do you think people are paying us what they're paying? Why do you think somebody will pay 20 grand for this website? And you'll be surprised to see how the client starts to list different things. They'll be like, well, like you do great designs, obviously. I see you have lots of good reviews. You clearly know your material. And they slowly start selling themselves. And all of a sudden, you're just sitting there and like listening to a salesperson in front of you selling themselves. Now look, you might not sell every single meeting. Maybe even this example right now might not help you sell that one person. Not everyone is able to afford your services. Not everyone is able to comprehend the amounts they're about to spend, even if everything makes sense. You can give someone a gold on platter and they'll still won't take it, even though it's very, very cheap, right? But let's go to the other example when the client says, well, look, I appreciate your quotes and your time and everything. You said 20,000, great, but I only have 5,000. In this case, you're in total different areas, you're in total different ballpark, and there's two things that I usually do from here. First of all, if I don't even wanna work with this client, if I can't vibe that this is not gonna be a good relationship, I just get up and say, hey, look, I appreciate your honesty. Um, obviously, this is not gonna work out because of financial reasons. Um, what I can do is I can refer you to somebody that works on the lower end, one of my people I'll, I'll reach out to for sure and I'll send them through to you. Otherwise, like if you do come up with the budget and you want to continue with this business, we can revisit this meeting once again and see if this will work out in the future. And I should stand up, shake their hand, and usually they let me go without any problems or they might say something back. Uh, yeah, like sorry, they didn't work out, whatever, right? At this point, I already know I don't want to even be in that room anymore, so it doesn't really matter. I'll just act professional and walk out. The other way is when they say, hey, look, you, I know you said 20,000, everything sounded great but our budget is five grand. But let's say this was a company that I do want to work with. The, the name is so big that I want it on my portfolio, but for some reason they're just being cheap and like they don't understand the value for whatever reason. What I like to do in this case is I like to take a step back because clearly something is missing in my presentation. If they heard 20,000 from me and they say five, 
they're undervaluing my services. They think that I'm not worth the number that I said. So I have to really trace back and figure out where is that that I've missed? What is that that I didn't explain correctly so that they actually come on board with me and understand that I want to get paid what I'm worth? Usually the answer to, like I know you said 20 but we only have five, what can you do? I would usually say this, if I agree to the deal and I said, okay, sure, I'll, I'll reduce from 20,000 to 5,000, how would you feel about my services? Would you feel that I know what I'm talking about? Would you feel that I'm doing a good job? And you'll be surprised to watch them kind of react to that. Some clients are different than others, but most of them react in a really weird way. They're like, well, you know, our financial like statements right now are not at the best level. We can't afford 20,000, blah, blah. And now we're steering back to we can't afford. So one thing we need to distinguish right there is, can you not afford me? Or is this like a low ball situation? Which one is it? Are you just trying to shop for the best price? Or are you just trying to figure out if you can afford to work with me? Because those are two different things. I don't want to deal with a low baller because they don't value me. They just think that they can shop around and find someone cheaper. They believe they'll get the same value for a cheaper price. If that's the case, then by all means, go ahead. The most important part is don't be afraid to say no. Like simple as that. Like you're, you're not required to take every project. If you say 20 and they tell you five and you take it, that's probably going to cause more damage to your business than help you because there's a reason you said 20 because that's where your profits are. You, you calculated it. You feel comfortable with the project at that rate. Maybe you could have gotten a little bit less in your head before you quoted, but you definitely didn't account five grand because that's probably the minimum your cost and that's not even accounting your time and so on. So you want to make sure that you don't just say yes to everything just to get the project in. On a very rare occasion, if Everything is not working out, but it's a huge name that you want on your portfolio. You might close your eyes, but we're talking about everything else out there, right? We're not just talking about that one occasion. So let's recap quickly. This became quite a big, long video. I apologize, but when I get passionate, I just start talking. So right from the beginning, you want to act confident, have a strong portfolio, and make sure you know how to provide value the right way to your clients. When they call you, make sure you pre-frame the conversation so that they know what to expect in the meeting anchor your numbers so they are listening to the first number and they consume the bigger value right away and then hit them with the lower numbers so they know there's a range they can work with if they do at the end of the day decide to go with a five grand option for whatever reason because you did say the the range as long as they understand that and you're both on the same page that's fine you close the deal you're doing much less work than a 20 grand project would be and everyone is happy as long as they understand the value that's proposed to them and they're not lowballing that value. That's the most important part. Lots of you guys asked for this video in our Facebook group and in my private messages. So make sure you leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.